words, when Jesus Christ was speaking to Zacchaeus, you know, in the light of his word, he confessed about his unrighteousness and he said, whatever I took it unrighteously from the people, I will return it back four times and whatever property and money I have, I will give, out, give it to the poor. Lord, fill my inner being with your presence. Hallelujah. If God wants to dwell in you, if God wants to dwell in your family, dear brothers and sisters, you have to show value for the word of God. You have to build your family on the word of God, but not on the traditions of man. We see there is unwise man who built his home on the sand. The sand is the traditions of man. Man, we should not build a family, we should not build a spiritual life on the traditions of man, but we have to build our life and family on the God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, if you have children, children are the gift from God. And one day you have to give account of how you brought up your children, especially if your children uh, if your sh children should pray and if your children should meditate the word of God in everything the parents has to set a spiritual example before their children you can't be busy in your work uh, if you are busy in your work if you are always uh, on your mobile and if you say to your children to pray to read the word of God certainly they will not do it if you want your children to pray set a spiritual example before them by praying. If you want your children to read the Bible, set a spiritual example before them by you yourself reading the Bible. If you want your children to come, come to Sunday school regularly, you have to come to church regularly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this last days, brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to build our families on the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only listening to the word of God, but we should be Doers of the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to carry the presence of God into your workplace. You know, when you carry the presence of God on yourself into your workplace, the people around you will see the love of God in you. Will see the compassion of God in you. Will see the mercy of God in you. Will see the forgiveness heart in you. In that way, you can bring many people into the church. Hallelujah. In this last days, God wants not the hearers, but the doers of his word. Let me make this pro positive proclamation. I will say it. You just say it behind me, you know. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Let me hear the word of God. Let me hear the word of God. And let me do the word of God. And let me do the word of God. Let me hear the word of God. Let me hear the word of God. And let me practice the word of God in our life. Let me practice the word of God in our life. And I believe all the church believers in SAF are doers of the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been praying for the SAF church. I've been asking God, what should I preach, Lord? Uh, usually I don't prepare sermons, you know. Uh, while the worship is going on in the church, I'll be asking the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Lord, what do you want me to convey to this congregation? And while I was praying in spirit in my room, God was showing me a vision. You want me to share it or you want me to conclude it? You want me to share it? Say a loud hallelujah for God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. The vision was, God was having the staff church very near to his heart, you know. He was feeling so happy towards the Sav church. Uh, that feeling was, he was expressing me in this way. Uh, as a husband uh, feels happy when he has a faithful wife, you know. When he has a faithful wife. When he has a hardworking wife, you know. The, uh, the husband feels so happy, so blessed by the wife. In the same way, uh, the heavenly father Lord Jesus Christ, they were feeling so happy. Uh, of sap church, the activities which are going in this church, you know. Uh, I, uh, you are so blessed to have Pastor Preetam Singh as your senior, senior pastor here. Uh, let's give uh, a, a clap offering for God for his faithfulness, for his hard working. 
you know, I've been observing his life since few days. So what I observed in his life was his very hardworking pastor. You know, I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, when I, when I have seen his work, when I observed his work, I confess to God personally, Lord, I am not working for your kingdom as the pastor is working very hard. You know, uh, I got a personal confession in my heart. I really wept for that when I uh, seen his hard working, you know, working very hard, you know, he's having very zeal, you know, for the work of God. I confess in my heart, Lord, I'm not able to work as Pastor Pritham Singh is working in the extension of your kingdom. I confess it. Really, you're so blessed to have a hard working, faithful pastor in your congregation. Praise God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. Hallelujah. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, the third house where God wants to dwell is the church. Where God wants to dwell? Church. It's the church. Hallelujah. 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 In the church, many families come together and we make the church a house of love. What is church called? Church is called a house of love. A house of fellowship. The first place where God wants to dwell is? Our body. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16, we are the, we are the, can you read, read, read it for me? Can you read it for me? 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. Second Corinthians chapter six and verse sixteen. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. For you are the temple of the living God. The first thing is God wants to dwell in us. The second thing, the second place, God wants to dwell in our family. A family that prays together stays together. There are three altars which we have to build in our life. Personal prayer altar, family prayer altar and fellowship prayer altar. These three altars are very important for God to dwell in His fullness in our life and in our family. The third place is where? In the church, God wants to dwell. God wants to pour out His presence in his church. Uh, dear, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, the church was brought through the blood of Jesus Christ. Always the Satan is looking to divide the church. What is Satan's main agenda? To divide the church, to divide the fellowship, uh, uh, to cause discord between the believers. That is the main agenda of the Satan in this last days towards the church of God. We should be very careful as believers in Christ. You know, uh, one day a person came to a pastor. That person came to a pastor and he was telling in this way, Pastor, if you want me to come to your church, I have a condition, he said. If you want me to come to your church, I have a condition. The pastor asked, what is the condition, brother? Please tell me. The person was telling, I want to be a chairman of any department in your church. I want to be a chairman in any department of your church. You know, he was coming to the pastor as if he's doing some favor to the pastor and the church. As if he's doing some favor and help to the pastor and the church. Sometimes we may have the same attitude. Wherever God placed us in leadership in the church, always we should thank God and we should give glory only to the God. We should not have an attitude that I am doing something for the church, you know, because of me the church is going forward. No, 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 no. That's not the attitude. We should not have such kind of attitude. So he said, I want a chairperson position 
in your church so the pastor was thinking what chair person position to give to that believer and the pastor said next sunday you come by 9:30 i am giving you a chair person position your work is the profile of your work is you have to clean the chairs and arrange all the chairs in the church you are the chair person of every chair in the church the pastor said this person did not come the next sunday <laughs> no there are many chair persons in the church <laughs> brother chair person sister chair person uncle chair person aunty chair person dear believers uh, dear brothers and sisters in christ always you know whenever we do anything for god's word the bible says in luke chapter 17 and verse 10 can anyone read it read it louder for me luke chapter 17 and verse 10 i don't know why god is prompting me to tell these things to you uh, I, i'm just conveying what god has put in my heart luke 17 and verse 10 as which of you as which of you having a servant plowing or tending sheep plowing or tending sheep will say to him will say to himself when he has come in fr- in from the field when he has come from the field come at once and sit down and eat yeah the next verse but will he not rather say to him yeah please please go that's the verse perhaps something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till i have eaten and drunk and afterwards you will eat and drink Sorry, it's verse ten. I'm reading it for you in the NIV version. So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say. Let's read it together once. All of us read it together once. We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. That is the mindset what we should have in the church when we are working for God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. we should not be like that chair person <laughs> you know in the kingdom of god god says god will give good position for servants for who who have the attitude of a servant when you go into a palace you know when you go into a palace when the kings are dining in the dining room when the kings come inside the servants will not stand there before the king before the king come in, come into the dining hall the servants will arrange all the food and they go and just stand back somewhere and after the king and the officials have the food then the servants would come forward to clean up the table our work for god should be in that way hallelujah in the world says you know stamp others and go rise up in your career but in the church we have to go down to raise up others praise the lord hallelujah Amen. in the world stamp others and raise up in your career but in the church we should go down to raise up others praise the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. always we come to church to get something for god get job from god get a good husband and wife from god get good income get good earthly blessings my dear brothers and sisters we should always have what can i give to god when you come to church what can i give to god you should give your care for others you should give your love for others you should give your service for others you should strengthen others you know in most of all the countries there is there is an instrument to collect sand there is an instrument to collect sand uh, in all other countries like america uh, asian countries especially in australia new zealand the instrument is in this way they use the instrument in this way to collect the mud and put it like a pile in some place but in india you know the instrument is in the, in this way always take the mud and keep it like this in the other countries how is the mud in- instrument of the mud it is always it's like this give give but in india take take what can i get from the church what can i get from the neighborhood what can i get from my friends family always our nature is always take take but let me have the nature of 
strengthen others, care for others, help others, serve others. That should be the attitude. And one more thing what God is prompting in my spirit is fault finding. What is that? Fault finding. Fault finding where we are very quick to see the faults of others. In, the, in this process, we forget to find the faults in ourselves. Very quick to find the faults of others. But we do not examine our own faults. You know, Satan would give light on every person's life, but he will not put light on your life. We see all the sin, all the iniquity, all the transgression in others' life, but we don't see the sin, the iniquity, the self-righteousness in our own life. Being a part in the church, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we should always encourage others. If there is any need, if the person who, have, who has taken the responsibility to fulfill the need, if he is not doing that work, we should not complain to the pastor. Go and fulfill the work. But what we do? Pastor, that church under, that believer, you know, he's not working there. He's sitting there, he's roaming there. Fall finding, complaining. Complaining, fault finding. But what? <laughs> As the believers of Christ, what we should do? Go and fulfill that need by yourself. The pastor will not see. The church elder will not see. But who has seen that work? God has seen that work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we are like that, with the attitude of Christ in the church, we are blessed. One more uh, verse the Spirit is prompting me. It's Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition and vain conceit, but in everything consider others better than yourself. Hallelujah. If there is a believer in the church who is singing well, you are not able to sing, but the sister is singing very well. You know, she leads the worship in a very blessed way. What you should have in your heart, Lord, thank you for blessing that sister with the talent. She is so encouraging our church. That should be the attitude of yours. You may not preach the word of God. If some church elder is preaching the word of God, standing at the pulpit, what should your attitude be? Lord, thank you for blessing one of our church believer, our church elder with this gift of preaching the word. Oh, thank you Lord for him. Thank you, Lord. If you, you have a heart to preach the word of God, if you have a heart to lead the worship, what you should pray? Lord, as you anointed the pastor, as you anointed the elder, anoint me to preach. As you anoint the sister to lead the worship, Lord, anoint me to, to lead the worship. That is the attitude always we should carry. Consider others better than yourself. The first thing, where God dwells, it is in our body. The second thing, in our family. The third thing, the third place, it is in the church. Now let us close our eyes for one minute, small prayer. Let me examine ourselves in these three areas. In these three areas, let me examine ourselves. Our God is a merciful God. If truly, we, if we confess for our sins, he is there to forgive us. He's a loving God. He's a caring God. Rich in mercy. Many a times we were engaged in negative conversations. Many a times we have judged others. Slandered about others. Spoken something bad about others. It is grieving the heart of the Holy Spirit. Maybe our behavior is grieving the heart of the Holy Spirit. May, might be that sin is like a stumbling block between you and God. Maybe that sin is blocking the anointing of God upon your life. Maybe that slander is blocking the blessing of God upon your life and family. Let me confess, oh Heavenly Father, let me examine our words, Lord. Let me examine our attitudes. If we have any negative attitude, Please forgive us. Let we have the heart of Christ. Oh, let we speak only the words of our life. Lord, we may be weak in our family altar prayer. We may be weak in our personal prayer. Maybe I'm weak in coming to the congregation. Please, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Maybe I'm not responsible 
in the, in the job what pastor has entrusted me in the congregation maybe i'm i'm lacking zeal in your work please forgive me lord please forgive me lord lord cleanse us in thy precious blood let we have one us in mind one us in soul and one us in spirit and let we show lord jesus christ in our thought word deed and action in jesus name we pray and ask amen thank you one and all